Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update I want to show you some of the new mechanics that are coming to the light campaign v3 and those are mainly twofold that will be first up the algorithm which will micromanage your sales and production so that you don't have to do that every month yourself and the second aspect will be to show to you what the new engineering system uh, looks like and how it behaves in certain aspects. All that will be shown in spreadsheet because it is A, not yet implemented, but um, also B, it wouldn't be really possible to show it to you in that amount of detail uh, without the resorting to the scary, scary spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are scary. But before we head over there into the spreadsheet mania, um, what is the current status of the light campaign implementation, you ask? Well, it is coming together. We are not stuck or anything, but it just does take time. Quite a lot of it. It is very complex, especially with all the uh, better mechanics compared to the light campaign v2 uh, we are implementing. It is taking a lot of time. But anyway, the content patch I was mentioning, uh, that is still uh, planned for about ish next week. End of next week? Yes, end of next week. And uh, yeah, that will include new car bodies, lots of new fixtures, and maybe a quick fix or two, but maybe not. So, uh, let's get into the scary stuff. The first thing I want to talk to you about today is uh, some of the uh, bigger changes that are coming to the Light Campaign V3. And one of those super annoying things that I experienced and many of you too have experienced when playing the Light Campaign V2 was that basically if you wanted to play it optimally, you had to adjust production levels and pricing every single month and that is just so much busy work that is not fun yes you can tinker around and squeeze out a little bit more profit but that shouldn't really be what you spend your time on when you could be designing cool cars or make good grand decisions for your company and its strategy so one thing that is coming with the Light Campaign V3 is what you see in here. Well, that's a spreadsheet, Kirob. It's a spreadsheet. Yes, it's a spreadsheet because how am I supposed to show you the mechanics in the game when the mechanics are boiled down to just two or three numbers you see in the game? It's much easier to show you what's lying behind those two or three numbers uh, in the spreadsheet. So, what is going to happen is that there is an AI that tries to optimize your sales and it does so not knowing anything you don't know and um, but that is working the following way in automation light campaign v3 mode you will have a first of all a tiered system a priority system for your production which you can set yourself so there are uh, priority groups and let's say you have a model with five trims and there is one trim which you definitely want to produce all the time and just make sure that as many of these are getting pumped out. So you set it to priority, to the highest priority, if that is one or three or whatever, in which direction we go, we don't know yet. But um, so you have that one in the highest priority. Then in the second group, you put all the others. So the factory would be going all right, let's produce as many as we can from the first one and then give the rest of the production uh, to, well, as many as we can is not really, as many as would sell at a certain reasonable price, rather. And then the other production is given to uh, the other trims. So now there are four trims, or let's say three trims, and there's one trim that is like your your shitty trim, which you don't really, don't really want to produce too much of. So there are three trims in there now, in this priority, second priority group, and it gets a number of production units per shift you let the factories work. And yes, I said factories, because um, and that is how it's going to work. Uh, you can, of course, have more than one factory producing a model, which is something that is new as well. But now it becomes complicated. 
Because, yeah, okay, how are you going to, without you yourself fine-tuning production levels, how are you going to deal with that? And the answer is, well, you don't. The AI does it for you. And that is all cool. That is cool. As you can see here, we have some production levels, sales by trim. And the green is overproduction. And we can set the starting parameters here that you would be setting, apart from potential sales you don't know. And this algorithm doesn't assume that it knows these numbers either. And these numbers, the potential sales, get modified quadratically by the sales price so that there is a dynamic market yeah, a faked dynamic market in here as well so it's not super simplistic what we're looking at here but rather it's somewhat closer to what the what would be happening in game two at least on a reasonable level then there are the uh, production units used uh, to produce one car of that trim the base price that is without any margin, that's the production price, uh, including the break-even uh, margin you have to slap on. So, for instance, you have set a break-even point of uh, five years. So this price would include the production price itself and then what you have to slap on in order to pay for all the engineering and factories and so on uh, beyond the material price. So this is the price we have set here. And then the start margin, which you also determine, of course, and the minimum margin, which you also can set in the UI. So these are our starting parameters, and then we just start at producing at uh, the target shifts, which you also set in the UI. And it is allowed to go up to a maximum of three shifts, which is also the maximum you can set it to in this one. But we can change these numbers around, so it could be 2 and 1.5 instead for instance so you aim for 1.5 shifts and it can go is allowed to go up to a maximum of 2 and now let's see what happens so um, the shift count is set to 1.5 and in the first month we're just going to produce because we don't know anything about what the sales will be so the sales turned out um, or rather first we calculate what this actually means in profits dollar profit per production unit that is about how efficient your factory generates profits for you. And we want to optimize these values. That is kind of the goal of the algorithm. It doesn't help you that much if you're selling tons and tons of cars, but you're not making a profit. And if you um, want to do that anyway, there's always the option for you still to set a manual price. So we're not taking the choice away from you to optimize, but rather, we are giving you a tool which, for the most part, will work just fine at uh, making those decisions for you. So, uh, cars produced, okay, yeah, we have some cars produced. As you can see, Trim 2 produces slightly less because what we're doing here, you know, with a product, they are in the same priority group, right? We said that, same priority group. They get an equal share of production units, which currently is this value. Per shift we have 1.5 shifts in this instance and then that means that well this this trim re uh, needed more production units per car so it produces slightly less this is an equal split at this moment the profit per production unit is not equal in this instance and now the potential sales are calculated with these prices in mind this is Remember, this is fake. This is not how the game does it, but it should give you an approximation of that um, when you increase pricing, then the potential sales drop as it would in reality. So now we know our sales and now the algorithm for the second month can look at, huh, did we actually manage to sell as many cars as possible at that price? Did we have any left over after the month? Or were we underproducing and had none over? This is this little flag here, which checks on and this value, production versus sales. So we can see here, well, we produced as many as we could sell, but that doesn't give you any clue about how many you potentially could sell, which makes it tricky, right? In this case, we have found the maximum already and we had a pretty strong overproduction. So what happens now is that the algorithm goes in like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Well, overall we had underproduction, even though we had overproduction for this one. 
cool. So we upped the shift count. And currently we had an overproduction of 16% in uh, counted in production units. But that's not... Yeah, we could still gain more from these, obviously. So what we're doing is up the margin by a significant amount because we haven't found the maximum number of sales yet. And for this trim where we have found it, lower the margin if possible and give it less production, um, less of a production split within this, uh, within these three trims. So we have added production split to the others. We have subtracted production split according to how much overproduction we had. And that gives us a new production ratio. This always adds up to how many trims you have. And with these margin changes, you see that we have a new rating for the profits per production unit for each of these trims. And now it produces the cars. The new set of cars per car production is more of the first one, more of the second one, and far less of the third one, which didn't sell all too well. And we still have some sitting in inventory. But, uh, oh, here's the inventory. But you can see that the inventory already for the second month is reduced for the third one. And now we have found the maximum number of sales for the um, second trim as well. So what it does from here on out is loop through every month and repeat that process. And it tries to find, optimize the margin. And what it does, let me see, the convergence factor is set to 25%. That is fine. And what you will see down here, let's see, profits per production unit, this was our starting point. And you see that we are optimized. After 18 month, months, we have a very equal um, profit per production unit and we are sitting at our target shift count. That's exactly what it should be. So this system reacts pretty quickly to um, to things that are off. Let's say you can only produce or you can only sell 500 at your base cost of these. And what does that look like? Well, let's go over to the graphs right here. First month, not too many sales and massive amount of overproduction. Oh, let's make it even more extreme. Let's put this one to like uh, 35,000, like this. So, first month, um, overproduction for these two trims, but massive underproduction of these. And as you can see, the algorithm optimizes it naturally, probably about each as well as you could do in most cases. Um, maybe sometimes you would be a bit more aggressive by in um, upping the margin and upping the production. But I think the this algorithm does pretty well. So what it does look like over time is here yeah, extra profits in dollars beyond break even, and you see it's it's stable once it has found its plateau. Uh, also, if a competitor gets released, like let's say after 12 months, it would be pretty quick to re-optimize this whole thing at that point within a month or two to match the new required production levels and your new pricing. And your main controls you have for steering the algorithm is that you can set the um, minimum margin, the start margin, and you can set your target shifts, minimum shifts, and maximum shifts. Okay, let's say you have some stupid starting values here for one of these, but everything else is pretty standard. Starting margin of 400% in this one case. Let's see how the AI reacts to this. And we see that, oh, this takes a while because it was so off. But you also see that, yeah, it reaches a pretty stable extra profits per beyond break even reasonably quickly. And, uh, well, this is, this is margin, yes, but it doesn't include how much you, you actually don't sell and so on. So that is still feeding off the overproduction here. That's why it's dropping. You never were really able to, uh, get that extra margin anyway. This graph is a little confusing, I guess. This one is showing better what's going on. So uh, yeah, this is all working nicely and will be part of the Light Campaign V3. So less micromanagement of things that are just not fun. And another quick little thing I want to show you, a major change to how engineering works. Now, I've talked about it quite a bit before, and this is this n-dimensional vector length 
calculation thing. I want to show it to you in more in practice, also in a spreadsheet, because otherwise it's very difficult to show. But um, yeah, this is what is going to be the, the main engineering mechanic for the Light Campaign V3. This was not the case in the Light Campaign V2, obviously, where all engineering times were just linearly added to each other to produce one sum of engineering and your engineers had to go through that sum with their bonuses, of course, multipliers and so on attached to it. And this has changed to be each section is engineered individually and then it is assumed that they don't have anything to do with each other so the vectors of the time vectors are perpendicular to each other and then the length of the time vectors because you at the end have to piece them together um, or the parts together to form an engine or a car uh, they are the overall length of the vector that is resulting from building that n-dimensional base vector Okay, so how does that work? That's all fancy words and stuff, but it doesn't... To, to many of you that will make absolutely zero sense. Let me illustrate instead. So let's start out by building a very, very basic engine at the start of the game. So a four-cylinder... I've made this spreadsheet real nice! You see here, I can select things. can select things. So uh, it's cast iron, cast iron, cast iron, cast, cast, cast. Excellent. We are going with, uh, yeah, let's go with the, the quickest. We are going with a direct acting overhead cam and cast iron. VVT isn't available at that point. And naturally aspirated and a uh, single carb. No, not single. We go with a one barrel carb, but two carbs on there. And then single intake, short cast, no catalytic converter, no exhaust valves. Uh, first muffler, nope, but second muffler, a baffled, like this. Okay, so, now, uh, when we look at these sections, they add up to the following. The block itself has an engineering time, a total engineering time of 24 months, and the head of 19.6. And the bottom end is coming out at 15.5, top end, no extra engineering time there. The fuel system 13.7, exhaust 12.4, and miscellaneous costs are 12.4 as well. So if you um, did a quick addition of all those, then you would see that the overall engineering time, let's divide by 12, or rather, oh, point. 1, 2, 5 times this, because I don't know where the other key is, that would be, that would be a total of 10.47 years of engineering with the old system. But in the new system, it is 3.4 years, because those things are done in parallel to some extent, to a large extent. So you see here, 35% of this overall time is due to the block being complex. The head being complex is 22.7% of that time. And uh, bottom end, like the internals, fuel system and the others are around 10% each. Also, 3.4 years is pretty long. And that should give you, an, and that is for a very, very simple engine. Let's see what happens if you try to build a V12 as a noob company. And, uh, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Um, so, let's see. We build a, a 1946 V12 as a newcomer company. That is without the engineering bonuses. Oh, you can see a uh, block already shoots up to 73%. And it's up to 6.5 years of engineering time. Well, we are using cast materials, right? That's fine, that's fine. So that's all good. But oh no, our engineers, they, they really want to have that fancy, fancy single overhead cam technology. As you can see, even though this adds 13 months there, I put an X here too, it only takes the lowest one. Um, if we are switching from direct acting to single overhead cam, the overall time only changes by 0.4 years. While the uh, head itself takes quite a lot more time and that is 13 months extra. 
<laughs> you see, it's not a difference of 13 months, it's not over a year, but rather just 0.4 years. And uh, yeah, let's build this engine to completion. Uh, we have no, none of that, none of that. It needs more carbs. It needs plenty more carbs. Let's say you have a bit of tech pool and you add a two barrel carb here. And two, no, three two barrel carbs. Uh, does that change things? Yes, that adds, uh, adding the extra carb is another three months roughly. So uh, we have that and exhaust yeah we don't need anything fancy there short cast now we need race tubular headers of course but you see that doesn't add all that much to it 7.8 years versus 7.4 because the other things already take so damn long but you can see the exhaust system shooting up a bit to 14 percent oh, oh sorry wrong wrong value 12 percent instead of two percent of the overall time so really, do you want to spend seven friggin' years to get that V12 out? It will be outdated by the time it comes out. But at some point you need to build your bases for your future engines. And this is so much easier to balance to be realistic, which uh, is what we try to do here. Um, you will be able to, in later campaigns, especially in the grand campaign, it will be a thing to get um, engines from an, uh, from another manufacturer and use them in your cars because engineering time for those is just too long. You can use that time to work on your own designs and uh, get them into your cars unless you're starting out with something really simple which uh, might then add up to uh, a reasonable engineering time for you and to for you to use those engines in your cars straight away. Another interesting aspect of that is quality. So let's say you have this complex engine, but you really want to, um, where's the exhaust again? Down here, um, exhaust, exhaust, exhaust. Let's, let's just choose long tubular instead. So 7.6 years, and now we can add quality to it. Let's see what happens. So exhaust is at 7.5, uh, 4%, and this is the number, this is 12.4 months. Now let's change the quality to plus five quality. Oh, and I was looking in the wrong place. So um, yeah, everything worked, I was just confused. So yes, we have upped the quality to um, plus five there from zero, and you can see the exhaust takes a lot longer. It takes from 25.8 months, now takes 52.2 months, which makes it one of the most expensive parts in here but it has not upped the engineering time that much. So, uh, well, from, where is it? Let's go with zero. From seven point, it has upped the engineering time by less than a year, even though it has added like two or three years, two, two, uh, two years to the engineering time down here. Yeah, so it will be much more feasible to play with the quality sliders if you understand what you're doing. If you have a very simple fuel system and you're currently engineering for something complicated, um, something complicated different than uh, in a different section, like the top end or the bottom end, then you probably can squeeze out a bit more quality of the fuel system so uh, that you, for more or less free. Let's see, do we have anything bottom end here, for instance? This is at 4.2%, 7.6 years, a plus five quality that was super expensive before um, before in the light campaign v2 it's almost not feasible and if we add it now you see well it doesn't make much of a difference it is just 0.5 years so yeah six months excellent so this system will be in place for both the engine and the car and it will incentivize you to reuse engines and continuously build your engine legacy. You make facelifts of engines and you make facelifts of cars to keep them fresh, but at some point you really need to design something new. And that might take a few years, a lot longer than previously. I think that will make the game feel a lot more immersive and realistic at the same time. 
and I'm really looking forward to seeing that in play in the light campaign. We are currently implementing those things. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.